you've got quite a lot of accolades. Founder and CEO of Midnight Health, um, 19 and 22 Australian Young Entrepreneur Awards. Um, you won them both? Uh, yeah, so one in 2019 for my last business and 22 for Midnight Health. You've sold uh, a previous business. What was the name of that previous business? Search Factory. And you've just raised, you closed, uh, was it this year or last year? Uh, last year, we closed a $12 million raise. $12 million raise. And prior to that, a $4 million raise. Last uh, raise was at a $48 million valuation. Congratulations, mate. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so how does it how does it feel running a startup of, of that sort of size to raise that sort of uh, you know amount of capital? There's very few people in Australia that can sort of attest to that, that accomplishment. Look, I mean, I think... It's great, and and we try to take time to celebrate and recognize with the team, you know, what we're achieving along the way, and and uh, you know, I speak to the team about the fact that the best part of this is the journey, mm. uh, you know, not the the end result, or or not when we become a two hundred or three hundred or five hundred people company. It's mm. like right now is the best time to be in the business, but at the same time, it's like every time you raise capital, there's huge expectations that come with that, uh, and so. You know, so you raise money, you have one day to celebrate, and then it's like boom back That's into. That's when the work starts. Yeah, hiring more people, working out where we drive more growth from. You know, keeping the investors happy. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, why don't you just introduce uh, Midnight Health, if you don't mind, just give an overview of what the company does. Yeah, so uh, we've built our a digital healthcare platform. Mm. Uh, so currently, we enable uh, telehealth consultations, uh, e-prescriptions, uh, pharmacy delivery for medications and over-the-counter products. Uh, and so we've got uh, a few different brands that sit underneath Midnight Health uh, that are all empowered by our platform. Uh, so we got Yuli, which is a women's healthcare brand, and that was the first brand that we brought to market. Uh, we with that, we launched Australia's first emergency contraception delivery service. Oh, wow. Uh, along with contraceptive pill, thrush, herpes treatments, uh, very sexual health focused to sure. start with. Uh, That's how you started, yeah. sexual health. Yeah, okay. so that was the first brand that we brought to market. So, uh, yeah, with the the first emergency contraception delivery service, that gave us a lot of press, uh, which was, gave us a good kickstart to the business, mm. got us a lot of traction to start with. What's emergency um, com contraception? Uh, like morning, after morning after pill. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, technical term is emergency contraception. Got you. Um, and so, yeah, that, that got us a lot of press. You know, we were kind of in SMH and Pop Sugar and uh, Girlfriend Magazine and, and all sorts of places, yeah. which was great. And so that was a really good start to the business. Yeah. And then, you know, we've kind of focused on expanding since then. So we launched a men's focus brand called Stagger. Uh, we've launched a brand called Hub.Health, mm. uh, which we actually see becoming the biggest brand and our leader brand over time as we okay. integrate more products and services. Uh, and then we, we launched a fourth brand um, called Vidality, which is a bit of a unique uh, product, which is like personalized gut health, uh, utilizing a gut microbiome test. Okay, very interesting. Why, why the... Um why so many different brands? Why isn't it all under the same umbrella? Like, of course, Midnight is that overarching brand. But what was the strategy behind sort of having separate products or sanctioning or, or you know, separating the, the, the uh, traction channels out a little bit? Yeah. And so, so we started with that um, to gain traction quickly. Uh, one of the things that we can do in a digital environment that you can't do in a physical clinic or in a pharmacy is really cater to niche demographic audiences. Um, sure. And so... That allowed us, at least in the early days, to launch with Yuli and Stagger and, and speak to really specific audiences. You know, Yuli is a, uh, you know, speaks to a younger female audience, you know, talks a lot about sexual health and uh, body positivity and has our clinicians share mm. information and insights that, uh, you know, topics that may be considered taboo. Uh, and that's allowed us to really speak to and connect with a specific audience, even work with influencers and other ambassadors who, who speak to that market. Right. Uh, so that's allowed us to, uh, at least from a marketing perspective and a branding, a perspective, branding perspective as well, perspective. allowed us to gain a lot of traction really quickly mm. and, and grow those brands. Um, over time, uh, as I said, you, you know, our longer term vision is in how do we build access to a complete health ecosystem? Mm. Um, so not only what we currently have, but how do we add more conditions to the mix? How do we add allied health? How do we add digital health programs that support medication delivery and behavior change, mm. uh, integrating connected devices, you know, so that we track and monitor patients over time, uh, integration with the physical clinic environment as well. Um, and so as we start to tick off more and more of our roadmap, uh, that's where a single brand like hub.health uh, really caters to a broad demographic, uh, you know, it's gender agnostic, caters to you know, somebody who might be 70 dealing with chronic conditions and a younger um, you know, female or male who might be just looking for a quick script or, or looking for someone where they can go discreetly to access medications. So I think over time we'll find that one, you know, that one brand will become the bigger. Sure. Uh, but initially it's definitely been valuable to have Test, niche demographics. Iterate. Yeah, talk to different uh, really specific cohorts of customers. Love that. Mm. Um, look, health tech's massive, obviously. Um, do you know how big of an industry it is here in Australia? Do you primarily operate in Australia? Uh, yeah, so we're fully Australian fully focused. Australian. Um, um, there's, there's, you know, it's 
it's massive yeah. and there's a million and one companies trying to do health tech. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I love Shark Tank, for example, and you know, every second pitch is about a health tech company, you know, uh, trying to do teleconference calls. What makes you guys special or what was the, what was the angle that you approach things that really uh, gave investors that, that confidence to say, hey, you know, Nick's onto something here? So I think one of the things with us is that we've always, even though we have started with niche brands, we've always had the view of like in five to 10 years time, the business that does the best job of consolidating these healthcare products and services into a single environment mm. will be the leaders in this space. Mm. Um, and so I think the early adopters or the early movers in the health tech space have focused on really niche services or niche conditions. Um, and, and some of them in their own right are huge categories, you know, especially certain conditions, uh, you know, on a global scale. Erectile uh, so, dysfunction, for example. Yeah, erectile dysfunction, mental health service. Sign me up. <laughs> yeah, 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 jump in. <laughs> Again, I'll give you a discount code when we finish. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, sorry, but, go ahead. No, no, you're right. But uh, that, that's where they've started. And we've always had their vision from day one. How do you bring all of those things into, into a single environment? And that's always been our roadmap. And I think that's where we've investors with a bigger vision or looking at what they think the future looks like. I think that, you know, in the conversations we've had, that seems to resonate with them a lot more than like, we're going to just target erectile dysfunction or sure. we're just going to target mental health. Sure. Uh, and so it comes with commitment to a roadmap that's never ending, but uh, that's, you know, always been our focus. And that's why we've yeah, managed to, uh, you know, lock in NIB is a really good investor for us. Okay. Um, how many staff, how many staff at Midnight Health? Uh, so we've got about 56 or 57 at the moment. Wow. Um, um, so, yeah. And can you talk about revenue? What sort of revenue did you generate? Uh, I don't think I can talk about revenue, actually. Uh, how do you <laughs> yeah. make money? How do you make your money? Yeah, so we make, we generate revenue from uh, doctors' consultations, uh, and then we also have our pharmacy partners pay a platform, pay a platform fee to us as well uh, for medications that we distribute through them too. Which one's more? <laughs> where, where do you generate most of your revenue? You uh, so it's actually a bit of a mixed bag. So when we first started out, a large portion of it was through uh, the pharmacy partners. You know, we had a big network of... Um, pharmacy partners that we worked with uh, but as the business has, has evolved uh, and we've added more uh, products there's a lot more uh, consult consultation only uh, mm. customers that are coming through the business so it is starting to um, change and then as we've just recently added over-the-counter products as well uh, so now it's not only prescription medications but now we're adding in things like vitamins and supplements moisturizers uh, so, I can order, screen, so I can order directly through your website and yeah so it'll... so Currently, we don't have a shop front for e-commerce stuff, but uh, it's available as add-ons when you come through to uh, purchase your medication. So um, the roadmap for us is to then ultimately stand up a, a shop front and version one of the over-the-counter products was as an add-on and then we'll, we'll continue expanding that. When you, when you say a shop front, you mean bricks and mortar presence? Uh, no, just an e-commerce store, okay. enabling you to come in without actually doing a consultation or a medication purchase. So essentially, you're brokering the relationships with the doctors right now, yeah. but at some point you want the licensing, is it, is it a licensing hurdle that you have to overcome for you to start offering the services yourself? Uh, so we so we essentially operate as a virtual clinic. So we do have doctors that uh, are contracted to us in the same way they would be if you went and visit a physical clinic. Right. Uh, so it actually operates exactly the same. So we, we are a licensed clinic that's operating uh, in a virtual setting. Okay. So um, yeah, where you, where you can't have ownership is in the pharmacy environment. Um, mm. due to the regulations around that. Uh, but yeah, we certainly can operate a clinic. Uh, we, I mean, if we decided to open physical clinics in the future, we could do the same thing. Mm. Uh, but yeah, we employ doctors the same way that you would if, if we owned a physical clinic as well. And so you're looking at moving into the ph pharmaceutical aspect of the business as well, so you can actually provide the medicine? Is that, is that what uh, you So we have partnerships with pharmacies yeah. that can provide that. Uh, right. The Australian regulations mean that that's essentially as far as we could go in terms of pharmacy ownership. So gotcha. um, we could never own a pharmacy ourselves. Uh, so we just have to have good relationships with our partners who we work with and they use our pharmacy dispense platform and, and uh, essentially pay us a fee for that. Incredible. Uh, so many different products, so many different aspects and angles to, to monetize the business. Yeah. You know, as an outsider who no experience in the health tech industry, you know, I'm I'm in awe of you know the 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 setup and the intricacies that would be required to develop a product like this massive right. Um, why don't you simplify things for us and take us to the beginning uh, of this business and and why you set out to start it and how you did start it because there's a lot of people that look at this industry and inspired and say you know I'd love to be in health tech but wouldn't even know how to begin. So I'd love to hear your story of how you actually started this company. Yeah, the one the one thing that I'll say to that is that I didn't come from a healthcare background, mm. and so you know while 
you may, it's easy to sit in the outside of an industry and make an assumption that it's too hard to get into or too hard to make an impact in. But the reality is that if you're motivated enough and you put your time and energy into it, that you can find ways to do that. Oh. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that short clip from the podcast, feel free to watch more of them by clicking here. And if you want the full podcast, click here.